All right, ladies and gentlemen, Nathan here with another modern video guide. As always, you can find me on Twitter and on Magic Online as Great Nate. And like my other videos, I'm not going to go into every detailed interaction in the Jun deck, but my hope is to give players new to the modern format a better understanding of what the word Jund means in modern. So let's talk about it. What is Jund? Well, Jund is the quintessential mid-range deck. More specifically, it's an attrition-based mid-range deck, and I want to explain what that means. Jund tries to do a lot of one-for-one, one-for-oneing its opponents, meaning it trades their Lightning Bolt for their Birds of Paradise, uh, or their Thoughtseize, which is a card we'll look at in a moment, with a card in their hand. Um, it tries to do that and then employ an uh, inexpensive threat like Tarmogoyf and then back it up with even more attrition type spells like Liliana of the Veil. That's a little bit different from a mid range deck, say like Blue White Red. Blue White Red wants to do one for oneing its opponent as well with cards like Lightning Bolt, but then it tries to more get ahead with cards like electrolyze or cryptic command rather than just rather than just keep disrupting the opponent with an efficient threat in play so let's look more about how jund is able to grind people out does that with these key cards um, and not just these these cards but these cards and a few more which we're going to look at right now we have Thoughtseize. Uh, in addition to Thoughtseize, we have Inquisition of Kozilek. Both of these cards are the preeminent hand disruption spells in the modern format. And they are about as good as you can get as far as one for one in your opponent. You don't need to wait to be reactive. You are proactively being disruptive. You can cast Thoughtseize and trade their super awesome Batter Skull for this one mana spell. So you're really able to deny opponents uh, access to, to their powerful cards that they thought they were going to keep a few moments ago. Um, Lightning Bolt. It's probably the best red spell in the format, if not ever. In addition to Lightning Bolt as a removal spell, we also have Abrupt Decay. Uh, as far as our two-mana hyper-efficient creatures, we have Dark Confidant. Dark Confidant allows Jund to begin gaining card advantage. Now, at the expense of life, but in a lot of Jun lists, Liliana is the top of the of the, um, of the the mana curve. Liliana or Corsair Crucifix, or, which we're about to look at. So there's a chance they can take some damage off Dark Confidant, but it's worth that extra card because especially if you have something like Liliana in play, you're seeing an extra card, your opponent is basically getting their hand shredded every turn, and they can do nothing while you... Maybe you're beating them to death with a Tarmogoyf. Probably the most efficient creature in Magic. Um, it can sometimes get very large. And because Jund is playing turn one sorceries, and then at some point playing a lightning bolt, it's able to grow Tarmogoyf to a pretty good size. A lot of times Tarmogoyf is a 3-4. And if you didn't already know, its power is equal to the number of card types among cards in all graveyards and its toughness is equal to that number plus one so if there's an instant a sorcery and an enchantment in the graveyard that's three card types goyth is going to be a three four because of his plus one toughness so we have amazing hand disruption we have some of the best if not the best removal in the format we have the most efficient card advantage creature that exists and we have the most efficient uh, power and toughness creature that exists in the format as well and arguably we have the best three mana planeswalker now she's doubly good when you're using cards like thought or inquisition to get rid of your opponent's answers you're able to resolve a tarmogoyf so now he's in play and then you follow it up with the tarmogoyf or you follow like a tarmogoyf up with a liliana of the veil and 
you begin making your opponent discard their cards. You have to discard as well, but you already have a Tarmogoyf in, in, in play. What do you care? Meaning as the Jun player. So that's that's what Jun does. Now one card that they um, are running kind of since the Deathright Shaman ban is Corsair of Crufix. And I think Corsair of Crufix is actually uh, quite good in Jund. It gives them another source of card advantage in addition to Dark Confidant. It dodges Lightning Bolt. Um, but it also gains them a little bit of life. And in a deck where they're sometimes playing a uh, fetch land and then sacking it and then immediately uh, getting a shock land in some cases and then casting a thought seize and just really damaging themselves, that's one from the fetch, two from the shock, and an additional two. Now, I don't think Jun always hits himself for five on turn one, but it's certainly possible. So the life gain from Corsair of Crufix is pretty relevant. So these are probably their key cards. This is really what Jund is built around. And one thing you may hear about is that Jund is like, you know, black, green, red, good stuff. Or it just plays all the best black, green, and red cards in the format. And that's basically true. Uh, and it does it to great effect. And Jund can grind out uh, a lot of decks. It's very difficult to stay ahead of Jund. Now, some of their other cards that you're going to want to keep in mind are cards like Scavenging News. It's another just great value creature. Not only does it gain life back for John, but it gives them a great way to interact with people's graveyards, and Scavenging News can uh, just, you know, become very large on his own. Maelstrom Pulse is a great removal spell uh, because it just basically hits anything, and it, and it gives John uh, an interesting uh, and, and potentially powerful ability to two-for-one its opponents. You'll also see them packing dismembers, so they're able to kill uh, very large creatures at instant speed. Uh, and then they run great man lands like Raging Ravine. Now, a lot of people say that Celestial Colonnade is the best man land in the format, and you know, you, people may have varying opinions on that, but Raging Ravine is right up there. And after Raging Ravine uh, attacks once, it is from then on able to dodge a lightning bolt because every time it attacks, it uh, gets a plus one plus one counter so yeah just more example of Jund running some of the if not the, just the best cards available to them in their colors um so some of the cards you might see out of the sideboard in Jund um graph diggers cage uh, i think that their matchup against pod isn't uh, as strong as some other decks so i, I could be wrong about that but uh, obviously just Birthing Pod's a great deck, so they're going to run Graph Digger's Cage. Uh, they also typically run Fulminator Mage, and against decks that have greedy mana bases, Fulminator Mage can be an absolute beating. Uh, gives them a creature that they can potentially attack with, and then also just denies their opponent access to mana. They're able to bring in cards like Shatterstorm against artifacts. Uh, they can bring in sweeper effects like Anger of the Gods, and they can just bring in other value spells like Batter Skull. So we can see some additional examples of those card types, Creeping Corrosion, um, additional artifact removal that they can possibly run, Engineered Explosives, and one card that I don't have on here, but I think it warrants uh, mentioning, uh, some decks also will run cards like Eternal Witness um, as a one of. Eternal Witness allows them to return a card to their hand out of their graveyard. Uh, she's a three uh, converted mana cost creature, and I want to say she's either a colorless into green. Uh, some decks are running those just as a way to get extra value. And uh, you'll also see some lists running Thrun the Last Troll. He's uncounterable, he's hexproof, he can be difficult for a lot of decks to deal with, primarily control decks. So that's uh, an overview of what you can see in the sideboard from Jund. Uh, clearly, there, there's more than that, and I encourage you to do some research at sites like MTG Goldfish to look at lists and, of course, to play the matchup as much as you can. That's definitely the best way to learn. Um, so how are, you gonna, how are you going to know if you're facing Jund? Well, a telltale sign is a turn one Inquisition of Kozilek. Now, something to be aware of. If you see a swamp into an Inquisition, there is a chance you're facing Mono Black Discard. Now their follow-up play is going to be another swamp into a card called the Wrench Mind, which makes you discard two cards. Now, just because you see Swamp Inquisition doesn't mean it's uh, Mono Black Discard, and it doesn't mean it's John. It makes it very likely that it's one of those. But if you see a Fetchland 
into a swamp or a shock land and then an inquisition then i think the chances are much higher that you are facing jund because mono black discard to the best of my knowledge does not run fetch lands and then if you see a follow-up play of dark confidant or tarmogoy for and even more followed up by liliana well then you're definitely facing jund because that's that is the deck that's what they do so all right i hope this was informative i hope you have a better understanding of what Jund is in Modern. It's a powerful deck. It deserves your utmost respect. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I greatly appreciate the kind comments that some of you have given me uh, in Magic Online and on, on the comments and on Twitter. And even the constructive uh, comments that you guys have given me. Thank you very much. I want to improve. I'm creating this content for you guys. And the more feedback you give me, the better. Please subscribe. Find me in Magic Online. Let's uh, play some Magic. Find me on Twitter. And I will see you guys soon. Thank you very much.